Mm -hmm. Anything about this agenda is it does not say, it does not give us the. Oh, yeah. Mm. The link that's, info. Yeah, that's odd. Um, Diane must have removed that. Yeah. Uh, put it back in, in flux. Yeah. And that's the one that's sitting on the website right now? I don't know. I hope not. You want to quick? I'll go page. check. Okay. I really hope not. I talked with Diane on Monday about changing it back to Zoom, and she said she would handle all that posting. So, Zoom, nice. She did. The agenda does not have a link and it doesn't say anything, so. No, are you serious? What about on the public meeting calendar? That, that's what I'm going to next. So that agenda looked like this agenda? Yep. And, oh, Conservation Commission meeting remote. Okay, is there a link? Yep. All right, perfect. Um, Well, good. There's Gretchen. There's Gretchen. I'm going to log into my um, email. Let's make sure that everybody knows that. Do we, do we, we don't have a quorum yet. We do not. Um, I'm just hoping that um, Carol and Charlie know how to get on this. Well, Carol certainly knows that uh, we're not meeting right. um, together, so. Right. Charlie should too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dan's still on vacation. Is he? Oh, no. I don't know. I didn't get any um, notice from anybody that they weren't. Can, can you look into the participant, the non- Here we go. Uh, carousel. Sure. This takes right. care of that. So I'm checking my... Hi, Carol, we now have a quorum. Hi, sorry to be late. Somebody came to my door. I, I had to talk to them for a few minutes. Not, Not a problem. problem. But okay. Julie, I don't think I ever got your your notes, your agenda with notes. Really? Did did you guys get it? Did any of you, the rest of you get it? Yeah, I, I did. So. I did. Okay. Oh, see I sent it, it yeah. last week. Um, let me just. It may have gotten buried. I'm sorry, I had a huge conference last week. Oh, that's all right. Um. Sure, Maybe it got back. I didn't get, I don't think I got any bounce backs. So you should have gotten it. Um, I'm just making sure that everybody can join us here because. Carol, I'm going to send it to you. Okay, thanks, Joe. And there it goes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we're, there's enough of us here, so let's uh, get going. Let's bring this meeting to order. July 19, 2022, New Report Conservation Commission meeting taking place on a Zoom platform. This meeting's being recorded. Uh, first item on the agenda are the approval of the meeting minutes from July 5th, 2022. Uh, anybody got any comments or change suggestions? I make light. a motion that we accept the minutes as written. Second. Second. All right, roll call. Uh, Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. I vote yes. Um, next item on Plum Island updates. 
Uh, Julie, you want to just go through those a little? Or not, not a lot of updates. Um, things are fairly static out there. I think that they're, the beach on Reservation Terrace is continuing to lower in elevation um, little by little as we've seen over the past several months. Um, but I, I do think that it, you know, the core bags are still in place. Um, the posts are falling out a little bit, but the rocks and the core bags are still in place. Hopefully that will all last until the fall when the dredge will is expected to happen. The Army Corps got several bids, um, at least two of which came in within the um, estimated budget. So I think they're, they'll have a you know, choice between those two and be able to start in the fall. That's you know, what we're hoping for. So sort of a good news. Other so than is, that, there any, is there any estimated start time for that? Or just yeah. depends on who they pick? It, well, it depends on right. Once once they get the contractor on board, there may be some changes in start time depending on whatever their schedule is. But um, I, the goal is to start September fifteenth or late September, as soon as they're able, um, given the window of time with clovers and sturgeon and all the. All that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're not going to get an update from Bartlett Mel uh, Frog Pond project. So uh, we're on to certificates compliance and the like. Um, the uh, Daily Group 37 Colby Farm Lane has re <clears throat> requested a, a continuance to the next meeting, which is what? That's August 2nd. Yes. Um, so if we can get a motion to <laughs> continue. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call, uh, Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. We have, uh, we have more people. Yeah, Charles um, Alvacetti was in the attendees list, so I promoted him to oh. a panelist, so I hope, I think, and Dan arrived too. Yeah, okay, so everyone's here, great. All right, Thanks, everybody. Hi, Dan and Charlie. Hi. Hello. <clears throat> okay. The gang's all here. Um, so, um, can I get a uh, motion to open the public hearings? Move we open the public hearings. Second. Uh, roll call. Charles, Charlie Lovacetti. Present. Uh, well, you can vote. You can vote yes on this. Is a, a vote to open the uh, public hearings? Okay. Okay. Yes. Well, you you can vote present if you want to, but okay, generally yeah, to yes. I, I changed my vote to yes. Okay. Um, Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. And I vote yes. Um, okay. Uh, first item is Chris Skiba, new report development zero Browns Wharf, Browns Wharf uh, notice of intent. So I, I'd just like to say that Chris is a neighbor of mine. We haven't talked about this and I have no financial interest in it, so. Okay. Um, I don't see anybody in the attendees list who looks like Chris Giba or Paul Avery. Um, are we early? It could be we, that we're a little early. We are a little early. Okay. Um, then let's, uh, let's move on to those two other things that we, should have been talking about anyways. Um, let's uh, let's motion to cl uh, close the public hearing, um, and then we will go and discuss uh, one uh, one issue with uh, the um, uh, Cooper Cooper North Pasture uh, um, issue, and uh, and also who would like to be on the. CPC. Um, so can I get a motion to close the public hearings for just right now? I move we close the public hearings. Second. All right, roll call. Char Charlie Lovisetti? Yes. Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. And I vote yes. All right, back to the top. Um, so we had, um, for the Cooper North Pasture Preserve, we had a uh, there, there's one spot, I don't know if you, whoever's been out there, uh, you might notice from Hale Street, you can see one house from, uh, from Hale Street 
if you're looking north, you can see a house on the right there. Um, and we had a, uh, a survey done to find the exact uh, property line and we found encroachment on the, uh, on the property and, and some uh, city trees and um, other brush and stuff were, were cut down. And um, we've had, we had some other issues, correct? It, weren't there some items? Yeah, there, there was a shed. There's a shed that is on actually on city property. And I'm not sure whether the fire pit was or not. And they also cut some trees. So. Yeah, there, there's a couple of properties at the end of Doe Run that uh, folks uh, apparently wanted a better view of the uh, open space and decided to cut down trees. Um, so I don't, uh, this, th this is a first one for me, uh, of encroachment on a open space parcel. Um, and Julie, is that, is it our, um, our issue or is it city issue? Um, that's a good question because I haven't dealt with this kind of a issue either, like enforcing a conservation restriction. Um, and Essex County Greenbelt Association is who holds the conservation restriction and is responsible for monitoring it, but I'm not sure it's their responsibility either. So um, I apologize for not having moved much on this since we last discussed it, um, since Joe and Steve and I discussed it, but because I was out of town, but I will talk with Andy about whose responsibility it is going to be um, to do that enforcement. But I think the first thing we need to do is kind of like, you know, catalog what it is that are the actual encroachments. I know they've removed several trees, if not more. Um, they've been sort of mowing into the field area. You said there's a shed and there's a fire pit. Are those on separate properties or all coming from the same Doe Run property. The, the fire pit and the shed in some in some cut trees are on one property, property okay. and I think the other property is just cut trees. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess the question is 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 the the encroachment is it jurisdictional as far as we're concerned or in other words is like it, is it Wetlands Protection Act violation in addition to being a conservation restriction violation? Yeah. Hmm. I'm, I'm not positive that we're a hundred feet. Well, I, I guess we, there's, there's, there is a possibility, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up uh, the, uh, the city map, but um, yeah. not quite, quite positive. Um, Julia, do you have the pictures that Matt sent? Um, I don't have them because I'm on this laptop. I'm not at the office with my whole system. Um, so I don't have those pictures with me right now. I, we put it If we put this on the agenda for next meeting, I can have everything available for everyone to look at. But And hopefully by then I can talk with Andy and some other folks about the process for handling um, this kind of encroachment. I don't know if it's like a legal thing where we have to involve Copeland and Page or I'm just not really sure, or city council even because they have the, they're the ones who accepted the conservation restriction. It's also a state accepted conservation restriction. So it goes in a lot of different directions. Do we, do we have any reason to believe that the people who did this encroachment knew that what they were doing? I don't know. In other words, I mean, as you guys probably all know, in the law, a lot of times it's a question of intent. Yep. Yeah. The boundaries aren't like marked out there. We didn't have a fence around the CR area. So how would they know? Well, wow. when they bought their properties, it was it was probably surveyed, and there may have been property. But you know, if you look at it right now, you you can't tell our land from their land. Yeah, I'm just I'm just wondering if, I mean, it doesn't mean that there isn't a violation and we don't have to do something about it, but I'm just wondering if more should be done to make it clear that that, maybe they just thought that land was didn't belong to anybody or didn't matter what they did. Yeah, um, I mean, the first step should always just be to contact them and find out what they, you know, why that happened. Um, yeah. I'm just not sure if it's 
whether or not that comes from which department that comes from us or well, that comes from yeah council. some sort of notice of violation and right. and ask them to yeah because it you before us i don't know yeah it probably I, does I, it's certainly city property um and it's it's most likely water department technically water department property because and we're um we're managing it for the water department the the original at least for part of that property i don't know if it was all of it but part of it was uh because there's there's water surface water there year round the, the water department uh basically they use the grant to to purchase part of the property too or put toward it so but it's uh, our responsibility to manage that property yeah oh we're not even really managing i guess it's even that is sort of fuzzy um, because the Essex County Greenbelt, well, Essex County Greenbelt just oversees it in terms of management. You know, we have a management plan, the city that's signed by the city, not by the Conservation Commission, but by the city mayor's office with the different farmers who, you know, manage it out there and do the work out there. Um, it's complicated. Let me look into it. I'll put it on the agenda for our next meeting. Okay. Sounds good. All right, um, and uh, who wants to be in the CPC? Who wants to be the CONCOM rep for CPC? Don't all, don't all stand up at once. <laughs> I just took a step backwards. Uh, I'm sitting down. <laughs> <sighs> all right, well, um, I, I guess at this point, when do you have to have somebody Go for it, Joe. Well, we need to, we just need to have somebody as a rep representative and let them yeah. let the mayor know that we have a representative for it. Um I I can do a caretaker membership and then I can sell it harder to people later, but we need to have somebody on there. Can you send something in writing that explains what it entails and what the responsibilities would be? Yeah. Yeah. That would that would help. It, it, it would feel more like an informed decision <laughs> rather than Joe just making us all feel guilty. I'm not feeling guilty. That, You're that, not? That, that's all I have, Carol. I have nothing else but to make you guys feel guilty. Yeah, I know. Um, all right, I'll. Uh, we can tell Charlie he has to do it because he's the new one on the commission. Yeah, we can all. Yeah, did, hey, you, Charlie. You, you see Charlie's <laughs> eyes right now? He's like, I was like, I barely know. I was just trying to get up to speed here. <laughs> I get, we get it. Uh, we could go back into the public meeting now, too. Yeah, yeah, we can. So, all right, we're done. We're done with this for now. We'll 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 discuss all of this. Let's have that as another item for the next agenda, too. Um, and now that we are past seven o'clock, we can get moving on this. Um, not that I see a lot more new names on the. Uh... I just promoted Chris Skiba. Oh, Chris, he's here. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I just, not, yeah. not showing on me. All right. So, uh, get a motion to open to public hearings. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call, Charlie Al Alovacetti. Present. All right. I'll go with the present. Steve oh, Moore? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. uh, David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. And I vote yes. All right. First item is uh, Chris Giba, New Report Development, Zero Bronze uh, Wharf, Notice of Intent. All right, Chris and Chris and um, Paul, you want to go ahead and you can tell me to switch. Um, pages or sheets or report of the plan or whatever it is. I want to give it just a the commission a brief presentation. I know they know they're pretty sure. Um, I actually have a, you know, a photo deck here um, that okay. I presented last time that still works. If, uh, you want to uh, share your screen? Yeah, that'll be great. Okay. Stop sharing. Okay. 
Everyone got this? Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, the formalities, I'm Paul Avery of Consulting Group. Uh, with me is Chris Skiba from New Report Development. Um, we are here. This is the, uh, what is it? Captain Joe's at Tuscan Sea Grill. Um, what's being proposed here is an outdoor, seasonal outdoor dining area um, and on the wharf, existing wharf. Uh, for summertime use in the boat storage area when the boats aren't there. So what we have on the screen here is the aerial image at the top of, um, this is the, the project site here uh, from the city GIS system that just shows it <clears throat> in boat storage during uh, off season months. And this is a current picture uh, with the improvements in place that shows what's going on here. Put down some white stone to refinish the surface just laid over what was there we have a series of picnic tables that you can see in blue um, there's some adirondack chairs and we've got more photos here but there is a food truck trailer right where my hand is that will um, serve as a, a raw bar and then there's a bar which is um, uh, it, it's a shipping container is what it is um, so here's another aerial shot that basically just shows the same thing. Here's the food truck. It's just a trailer uh, with four wheels, two wheels on each side. <clears throat> There's the shipping container, which would be the bar. Here are the picnic tables. We have some overhead lights that are all mounted in planter buckets. Um, other furniture includes the Adirondack chairs, and then there's some wooden barrels and some other planters, and that's, that's pretty much it. Um, what follows are some, interrupt me please if you want to. Um, what follows here are some ground shots. You know, here are the picnic tables from the ground. This here is, is the container that would be uh, the shipping container that will be serving as a bar, overhead lights. Uh, another view, here's the, the shipping container and then here's the trailer that would be the, the, the food truck trailer. Some high top chairs, picnic tables, umbrellas, and then again, here's the lighting and mounted in uh, <clears throat> the planter buckets. Uh, more views of the same, this one looking back towards Merrimack Street. And then we have our plan here. Um, I think this one, I don't know, I guess I don't think I have on this one a um, a picture of the, it was enclosed in the photo log in the application, but the utilities serving these, there's electric and there's power. Both of those have just been laid on the ground. I could call it a picture, but it's in the photo log with the NOI application. Um, they've just been laid on the ground and there are those sort of, you know, protective road covers over them so that you could drive over them and they won't uh, present a tripping hazard, but it's power to the, and water to the food truck and to the shipping container. So, Paul, what about wastewater? How is that handled? There, there isn't any. Right, Chris? Well, <clears throat> that water um, going in, wastewater, there must be water coming out. Yeah, the, the wastewater is a holding tank similar to what you'd have on a boat. Um, I also want to mention it at a logical point here, Joe Farrow is on, um, on the line as well. So at some point, he'd like to have an opportunity to, um, to talk. So both of those, the the food truck and the, the bar have a holding tank? Um, I believe Amy Scarpello's on. I know the um, I know the food truck does. I assume the um, beverage container does as well, but maybe Amy could chime in on that. I'm trying to get Amy on oh. the you want me to get Amy over? Sorry, I'm yeah, yeah. doing that right now. Okay, moved Amy over as well as Joe. Might take a minute for Amy to get here. Should have. She didn't get lost in space. Hmm. Um, Lori, Lori Paralisi is in the attendees list. Is that somebody who's representing the yeah. project? Yeah, Lori could answer that question, I believe. Okay, I'm going to promote Lori to panelists. Lori, you should be, yeah, okay. Hopefully this is working now. I don't know what happened to Amy, but 
Um, there's Lori. So once you're over here, you can unmute yourself and uh, feel free to join in the conversation. Yeah, I, I still see Amy as the- Yeah, try, try the, Amy again. She's back. Oh, there. now, okay, she's back there. Okay, Amy, I'm promoting you to a panelist. It's gonna like take a second, but you're gonna switch over. And then you'll be able to unmute yourself. Why is it not working? One more time. But if uh, Lori or- just, I'm just gonna allow out. Amy- I'm allowing Amy to talk. Um, Amy, as an attendee, you can unmute yourself. No. Amy, you're trying to talk? I am. Okay, I heard you that time. Uh, we have a... We have a connection issue with Amy. Um, well, why, do, an answer. Yeah, why doesn't uh, Lori or Joe Farrow chime in here for now? You feel comfortable speaking to this issue? No, you're muted. Is that better? Yeah, much. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, uh, thank you very much. So the structures are temporary structures and they do have the ability for uh, wastewater to go into a tank and be pumped out. They have, they have the ability for that, but are there tanks on site? Are there tanks underneath? Where were the tanks? Where will the tanks go? Uh, I believe the tanks are on site. I really, I need Amy to, to verify the detail of that. They can, if, if, if it's, they operate with tanks and without them. So if, if the requirement is for tanks, we have, for example, this is probably the fifth establishment like this that we have. We had one in, in Boston and Boston had no wastewater. Boston had tanks and we removed all the gray water, uh, you know, on a bi-daily or weekly or depending on what the, uh, what, which, which facility it was. So there, so we do have the ability to do that if that's what's required. So would a truck come in and pump out the tanks daily? Correct, yes, okay. yes. Our, and, and Amy would know whether or not the tanks are already there and set up for this kind of a system? She would, exactly. Yeah, uh, she's got her, her hand up again. Okay, let's see if Amy can, all right, Amy, I'm gonna, first I'm gonna try to promote you to a panelist again, which did not work before, still not working. So I'm just gonna allow you to unmute yourself over there. Oh, now maybe she's gonna be a panel. Here she is, okay. Amy, can you communicate with us at this point? I see no audio associated with her in the list of panelists. Oh. Hey, Lori has her hand up. Yeah, Lori, you're able to speak. I don't know why. And it looks like Amy, can you unmute yourself? Can't can't hear you, Amy. And I mean, uh, or Lori, I should say. Sorry. To, me to unmute. This hey. isn't going well tonight. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Can hear somebody for a second. This is Amy. You're coming in and out, Amy, but if you want to just keep talking, we'll let you know. The tank's on site. Uh, yeah, it's it's you're weaving in and out, Amy. Amy, can Amy just put a response to the status of the tanks yeah. on the chat? 
how about in the chat, Amy? Yeah, that's a fantastic idea, Paul. Let's do that that way. We have a chat. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, thanks. I have a question uh, that maybe uh, that's related that uh, maybe Joe can answer, but. Um, in the cases where you did not have to use tanks, what was your solution for wastewater? Uh, how did you handle that? Can you hear me? Yes. So we have, we have actually connected it. So in Salem, we actually have the temporary structures connected to town sewer. So we, we, we do have tanks on site. That is Lori telling us the tanks are on site. I apologize for the confusion, um, but we do. And, and they get emptied um, as needed. It can be daily, it can be whatever is needed. So we have the ability to do both ways, but today right now we have the tanks on site. So it would not, it would not be connected to permanent city sewer. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that there's nothing just going into the, directly into the to the river. So. No, definitely <laughs> not. No, absolutely not. And and in Boston, it's very strict as well. Uh, and we had a very strict set of guidelines on how to evacuate those tanks, and we did it according to those guidelines. That we would see the same here. Okay. okay. So they'd be pumped out, and that and the pump truck wouldn't be pumping them through a hose like into a nearby storm drain, but rather no, 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 in that water to a yep. proper just waste disposal, whatever. That is correct. Yes, the pump truck would pump it into the truck, and then it would actually take it off the site and go into a proper, properly disposed of uh, facility with all the accreditations for that. Um. One question I had would be in the case of um, a good sized coastal storm, what is your plan for this site? Uh, as far, I mean, everything there is temporary. In the event that we had to, to protect the equipment, it could all be removed. Uh, in the event of a coastal storm where we would have warning for that storm, uh, we have facilities uh, maintenance and we have people that can do that. Uh, we have the facilities, the trucks, the people to, if we had to disassemble the site, we could do it uh, relatively quickly. Everything there is temporary uh, and could be removed. And, and the trailers are on wheels. I mean, they could be hooked up and, and removed from the site very quickly. Is it meant to be a seasonal thing? It is. When will it be taken down? Um, I'd say probably the end of October somewhere maybe before that it depends in boston we would go to the end of october um the the this particular site is probably going to have a lot more wind than the boston site so it might not it, it, you know it might be too cold by that time but it's really it's weather dependent uh, how about going back to the boat storage in the uh, off season is that going to continue I would I would defer to Chris on that, but I believe when they need the the location for boat storage, that we would vacate the site. And of course, New England Development owns the site, so we would default to them as to what as to what they would uh, require for winter boat storage. Yeah, we we typically um, uh, put the boats in the back of the yard towards Interlocks first, towards the Horton's Yard building, and then that's that location where the uh, temporary outdoor seating is would be the last place we fill with boats. So it, we definitely would use it during the winter for boat storage. Okay. Um, what have you used this for in the past in the, in the summer? It's um, parking for um, the restaurants and the marina and the Hilton's building. Okay. So what we've done is we pushed the parking back further away from the water um, in favor of seating. Uh, and also, is that stone going to stay there year round? The stone on the ground? Yes. Okay. Uh, just to get back to if there's a coastal storm, um, you mentioned you have another facility in Salem and one in Boston. I assume they're close to the water. Do you have the, the, the time and the equipment to dismantle all three of those sites at the same time? Uh, we, we, we definitely do. 
we're we're in the we're building about four million square feet right now in Salem. We have a very extensive uh, development, construction, and maintenance team. Uh, we would see no issue with that whatsoever. We also have on site um, at the boat yard. We have a ten thousand pound uh, fork truck. And where will all of this, all of these things be stored in the winter time? Um, do you have a storage facility on site? Will all of this be taken off site? And it goes, it sort of goes to Steve's question about if there's a coastal storm, let's say we're getting a big early hurricane or whatever, a summer hurricane coming and this stuff isn't anchored down, it's in sure. the flood zone, where do you put it? Uh, we would put it, we would put it at the Tuscan Village site in Salem, New Hampshire. Which is which is 170 acres, and I own it. Yeah. So that's that's we have plenty of room. That's where all of the rest of these types of you know the pandemic actually uh, evolved us into a tremendous amount of outdoor dining. Uh, so we had facilities in you know in in Burlington and Boston and Salem and two facilities in Salem, as a matter of fact, one at the market and one at the restaurant. Uh, and so we've become actually quite. Uh, quite practiced to taking it apart and putting it back together. And what's to stop stuff from blowing off of that area right into the river? I mean, I know that might sound silly, but I'm just looking at everything being wide open there and there could be trash or stuff from the tables or I don't know. Uh, our plan is to maintain it very rigorously. Uh, I think that Lori and her team uh, would do that. Uh, you know, we've we've certainly enjoyed the the collaboration with the city of Newburyport, and we're excited to be expanding there. Uh, we have very high standards for that type of thing, um, and and that's something that you know we would we would not want that any more than you would, and we would maintain that rigorously on an honestly an hourly basis, not even a daily basis. Will you be using paper products out there or will it be all um, cloth, napkins and china and silver and all that? Uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be china, but it would be, it would be heavy plastic. Um, so we feel pretty comfortable that it would not create a lot of windblown trash. Mm. Could I, could I get some kind of a, a review on the chapter 91? Uh, I've been told that you don't need it. I've been told that you're, um, you're looking into it. Uh, the introduction was a little unclear as far as uh, how this site uh, relates to that. I, I think this is Chris, um, as a follow-up to our last meeting, um, you had asked me to follow up with my corporate office and ask for um, something in writing. I did request something in writing. Um, I did not receive um, a document back. Our position is that our tenant, Tuscan Seagrill, um, has gone to great effort to make um, an area that is much more accessible to the public uh, for the summer months and that it has been... Um, really improved um, also the handicap access at that location. And as I mentioned in the past, closest to the water, we had parking. So this allows during those summer months, uh, more public access. Um, we think that this temporary setup is a significant public benefit. Yeah, I'm, I'm only thinking about chapter 91 and the requirements. I mean, uh, uh, as far as whether you're permitted to do it. Um, I mean, since the last meeting, we did receive our DEP number. And I understand that there were no concerns raised um, from DEP. Um, as far as a, a writing from my company, I did request it and I was not successful in getting that. Hmm. You're saying DEP didn't raise any objections at all? Well, in the, I think he's referring to when DEP receives a copy of the notice of intent, the wetlands division, they give it a file number and they um, flag it for any issues or, or 
concerns that they have and they'll write what they call technical comments. And so if they feel like something's missing, they'll put that in those technical comments. And right now for this project, there's no comments at all. Um, so, I mean, sometimes they, they you'd think it's DEP, it's one division and another division of DEP that if they thought there was a chapter 91 issue, they could bring it up in those comments. But it's, it's still, um, it's a separate process from, from our process. And so it's the applicant's responsibility typically to take care of that chapter 91 license, either concurrently or after, um, usually not before because it's a longer process, but um, yeah, the, the time is this. Chapter 91 is, is concerned more with the usage. I, I realize that the usage of this um, hasn't really changed is because it wasn't a full water dependent usage in, you know, in the summer and so forth, but um, they usually uh, uh, regulate this and, and to create a, a restaurant use isn't usually allowed uh, without a modification to your license. So I, I, I just like to make sure that that's being followed up on. Okay, and uh, we can we can do a, a a special condition covering something like that too to just to get information back um, from you guys whether you've followed up on that or not. Yeah, I mean, I would I would just recommend that you you speak with your legal staff or whoever is responsible for this sort of type of permitting and just start whatever that process is with with DEP in chapter 91, start it now because it can take a while if, if you need a modification to the license um, or maybe you'll hear back really quickly that you don't need a modification to the license and then you're all set. But I think that that's something the commission wants to see moving forward in, in any case. Yeah, this would kind of be a unique condition in that regard where usually you can't start something until you've resolved all your uh, DEP waterways. But uh, uh, I guess uh, uh, it might be different. Um, I have reviewed the license and the license just licenses the wharf. There's no language in it about, uh, you know, the wharf is shown on the plan and that's about it. And um, it doesn't specify that it, what the uses should or shouldn't be. It's just the structure is licensed. Really? So, the the restaurant has to have a license. Well, I'm, I'm tired. It's not the rest. It's it's the, the oh the wharf itself. That's doesn't... right. That's right. So it's the license. It's not the black cow. Not the black cow. The Tuscan Grill property. Um, it's the Hilton's property because that's what parcel this is on. I see. Um, so it it doesn't have a prior. It's it's not lumped with the Tuscan Grill. Or... No, no. It's its own thing, and it's it's you know there's a whole myriad of licensures, but the one for this particular one, um, it dates back to. 70s, I think it does, but it basically it, it licenses the wharf. Yeah, that might be an issue. Yeah. It's, it seems like you could just move that forward um, with DEP chapter 91 and just give us an update on where that stands. Eventually, we would need a copy of that updated license. That's what's required. I guess, I mean, you could say we wanted to wait till that was resolved, in which case you're not going to open this summer. And that's, I don't think is reasonable on our part. Um, however, I would like to say that we could make this, it's only for this summer. And if you want to do this again next summer, then you need to have the chapter 91 issue resolved or we wouldn't approve it. That's, well, that's, that's something we could do. I give it temp I, give it temporary I approval. Can we? Can we? I don't know that we can do that. Can well, we do I, that? I think I can't do a temporary order of conditions. An order of conditions is good for three years. It's just a matter of what you are allowing within that order of conditions. So, I think this is a, this has already been sort of uh, framed as a temporary um, restaurant, temporary installation of the of all of these features. 
Um, so maybe you could do some sort of condition where these temporary structures are permitted for, you know, until whatever date, October, whatever it is, 2022. And in such, in, you know, if a chapter 91 license is required, um, I don't know, you can put some sort of condition in about it, it, it may move forward for future um, seasons after the chapter 91, evidence of chapter 91 license approval has been received. And whether that's just that ex the existing license covers it, and so fine, they just move forward every year after, or that then you get a new license and then, and then that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense okay. to you guys, Paul and, and Chris? Does that sound like reasonable? Yeah, I mean, I, it does to me. I, Chris, I'm defer to you if there are issues yeah. with friends in that approach. Okay, and I hear a yes. So. It works for us. Okay. okay. Um, do we have anything else? Um, I submitted a document today that uh, just as an explanation on how this project conforms to the performance standards of the city ordinance for uh, land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, it's a dull read. If you would want me to quickly walk through it, I could. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of it's fairly self-evident, but uh, if you want me to walk through it, I'd be happy to do so. Um, if not, I don't have anything further. I, I took a look at it and it, it seemed fine, but I don't know. Julie, did you get a chance to look at it? I did. And uh, thank you, Paul, for sending that today. I did read through it and it looked fine to me. You, you checked all the boxes. It's, it's really just a, a new process that we have for over the past several years that anything in, in these flood zones needs to prove that they're not harming the resource area or other properties or et cetera. So that was fine. It looked good to me. Thanks. Okay. So in order for us to do the type of order you were talking about, Julia, do, do we have to have an agreement regarding how long this structure is going to be up for this year? Or do, do we decide that or are we agreeing on a date? No. Um, is there an operation and maintenance plan along with this? There's an O and M plan that covers the Newburyport Harbor marinas, of which this is this is part of it. So it's massive, and it's been submitted on prior applications. So I didn't enclose it again. Um, but but that's not going to exactly include putting picnic tables and other stuff out in this area, right? Or you know, emptying of uh, of temporary, you know, uh, wastewater storage and all that. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't looked at it recently enough to know exactly, you know, what it may do on, you know, picking up litter and debris and that sort of thing. But you're right. I think it's pretty unlikely that it would discuss emptying the wastewater tanks because that isn't something that was here before. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking uh, to to move things along whether we can get a uh, you know, have a requirement for an O and M plan for this area um, to be approved by the conservation administrator um, when it's you know when it's ready. Um, do we we want to do anything like that? Yeah, I I think we should either have a separate one or an addendum to the existing one. Um, well. I, I would I would propose that we do a separate one that probably where the the owner operator the responsible party for the plan is the Tuscan Grill and it it only applies to this property during for this particular site during the months which they're operational. Uh, I think that's the cleanest way to do it. You know, um, and I, I'm I don't mind. You know, I probably want to. That's what I would prefer is something like that. with Joe on the specifics on it, but I think we can pull that together pretty quickly. Yeah, that, okay. that would work for me. 
Okay. So, so we're going to have a special condition that an operation management plan, operation maintenance plan shall be provided um, to the commission and that plan shall cover all operation maintenance activities on site through the operational season of Captain Joe's, something like that. Yeah. 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 We could, yeah. It, it'll be specific to this facility. Specific yeah. to this facility. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, and that will be um, overseen by Tuscan Sea Grill. Correct. Um, and then I have the other special condition being the temporary structures associated um, with the Captain Joe's are permitted to remain in place until, and we can put a date, November 2022, some, whatever you guys feel comfortable with, prior to installation of structures in 2023, evidence shall be provided to the commission that DEP has approved the project under provisions of chapter 91. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I, or maybe some to the effect that they're progressing with it. I mean, it's a, it's a tough nut that could take yeah. a while. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let, we could ask for a progress report by the end of this season. Progress report on discussions with DEP Chapter 91, Office of Waterways, shall be provided to the commission um, prior to. How about November 1st? November 1st, okay. And with the with the Owen Owen M plan, if you can lay out what you plan on doing um, in the event of, you know, a coastal storm or some other sure. natural issue sure. that we need, yep. need you to evacuate that stuff. Yeah, that's no problem. And you did say there was a DEP file number? There is. Yeah, there is. 051-1064. All right. Do we have anything else? I'm good. Uh, public? Right. Somebody? Okay. Um, anybody from the uh, public have any uh, comments? Uh, I see Ginny would like to say something. I know Lori still has her hand up. Go ahead, Jenny. Hi there. Can you hear me all right? Yes. I think this is a really great addition to the waterfront. Um, I own interlocks. So I received an abutters notice for tonight's meeting. And so that's why I logged on. And I wasn't familiar at all with what was happening there. But I really like seeing this. I think this is a really nice addition for the public to be on the water. I had lunch today at Tuscan Sea Grill. Um, I think it's a, a great asset to the community. So I would like to see this move forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, Brett, you wanna unmute yourself? Uh, yeah, just, um, it's, uh, you know, I live here in Horton's yard and it looks great to me. Um, I'm in favor of it. Sounds like it's going to be a good place. All righty. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? I don't see anybody. All right. Uh, what do we want to do? I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All right, roll call. Charlie Lovasetti? Yes. Uh, Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. All right. Uh, that is it for that. Uh, can I get a motion to close the public hearings? 
So, so moved. moved. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call. Charles Olivasetti. Charlie Olivasetti. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshall. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Uh, we just have uh, we just have order of conditions mm -hmm. right now. Okay. All right then. Uh, order of conditions for. Uh, Cooper Report Development, Zero Browns Wharf, uh, 051-1064. We have a couple of uh, special conditions. Yes, we have a special condition related to, um, I'll, read, I'll read these out the way I have them. And pardon me if it's a little jumbled because it's just in my scribbly notes from the discussion, but I can straighten it out better when I write them up. Um, the temporary structures associated with Captain, with Captain Joe's are permitted to remain in place until November 1, 2022. Prior to installation of, of these structures in 2023, evidence shall be provided to the commission of um, either, we could say, of either approval um, by DEP Waterways Chapter 91 office or um, or ongoing negotiations with chapter 91, something like that. Does that work for you guys? How long do you expect it would take Julia in the normal course of things for them to act one way or another on this? Yeah, unless there's ish, a problem. I mean, this is pretty small. They, they, they deal with huge harbor plans and things like mm -hmm. that. So this is pretty small. I would think that, but they are, they are slow and they are bogged down and short staffed, but I would, it shouldn't take more than six months. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's what Jordy's planning on for the Central Waterfront Project. I'd say six months to six years. <laughs> really? That's being optimistic. Well, because well, I'm mean, just wondering if we're going to end up in the same situation come spring if they still haven't. Well, but the, here's the thing: if they if they start talking with Chapter 91 about this and are and have you know and are told that they need to submit. An application for a new chapter 91 license or for a modification of their existing license they're not going to be allowed to open maybe i don't know if chapter if dep is going to let them open without having that approved so normally that would be the the sequence it's only because they started this which really isn't a good reason what well, you mean when they would be allowed to open you mean even right now or that come, you know, comes from i don't know i don't i don't yeah. know how dep would handle it to be totally honest we mm -hmm. don't we don't have that many new chapter 91 licenses happening you know in the city um so my guess is that they should be able to get through this pretty quickly I mean, maybe dep if they need a new license maybe dep requires them to do some sort of additional public amenities within that area um that would, I, can, I can see that being the most that they would ask because they are maintaining the water dependent use for part of the year. And this is only just a small additional part of the year. And if anything, it does give some public additional public access to the waterfront that doesn't currently exist. Charlie. Yeah, so sorry, I mean, I, mean, I can ask this offline if it takes long, but it just typically what is, <clears throat> how does the, the timing of this typically work? Do people typically file for, for the chapter 91? and? and get an answer from the state as to whether they need like a formal approval of their license first, or do they go to the town first? Well, typically, let's let's say for the Central Waterfront Project, where they know they need a Chapter 91 license for that, they will file with conservation first, because conservation usually goes quicker, number one. Um, and because a lot of, most of the time, if not all the time, DEP um, waterways will, in their chapter 91 licensing process require an order of conditions. So they'll wanna see that we've already approved it before they move forward with anything. Got it. Um, so we usually come first. But normally that would be uh, an activity that hasn't started. Right, right, that's the difference. Right. I mean, I think they may be able to get something because it is temporary. I mean, if they were looking to build a restaurant here, I would, I would go up on the six years uh, quite a bit, but 
if it's just a temporary thing you remove, you know, that that may be the way out for them. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't exactly pristine property when they moved That's forward. Right. So I think I think this kind of condition is going to work, at least for us. Um, it gives us the confidence that they are going to, in fact, move forward with that Chapter 91 license review um, rather than skipping it or ignoring it, um, which I think is really what we're concerned about. Is there a flag in our system somehow that would notify you that they owe us a uh, owe us something? Or uh... um, there isn't a flag. It, there might be if we were if this was already in our online system. There isn't a flag. I will just have to remember. And at a minimum, um, I mean, I I do talk with them about different projects here and there all the time anyway. So it's something that I could just bring up. But at a minimum, before they would be putting this stuff back in, in 2023, clearly, we would be requiring that update. Yeah, but will the burden be on them to come back to us, or is it going to be on us to go after them? Well, I I don't think that at this point, with this condition and in, in the order of conditions, I don't think that they're going to put this stuff back in without talking to us. And certainly we so it's visit it's not like we wouldn't notice um okay. and sure. it will it would definitely be on the city's radar and my radar in the planning office i'm not i'm not concerned about me forgetting about it um so but in 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 your statement of conditions or your special condition do we we have the date we had one date but do we want to put something else in there about them not going forward until well i just said in 2023 Nothing, nothing can happen. I'm assuming they're taking these structures out before January, right? So nothing goes back in in 2023. Oh, you put that in there. In. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, whether that's May or June or July or whatever. Um, so that was that, that's that condition. Um, then a progress report, then we have this, uh, this additional one, a progress report on discussions with DEP waterways um, in relation to the a chapter 91 license shall be provided to the commission by November 1st of 2022. So we want, we're asking them for an update in November. Um, and then we have, Do we need the update in November when they're going to be taking that all down in November. And then we're going to have, there's won't be any activity other than boat stores through the winter. And then they're, I, it seems like we really only need this update in in uh, in the spring. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it depends on what you you how much you want to know about what they're doing. Well, I, I think given what's happened so far, I'd like to have a prog know that they're making progress. You know, like in November, because it'll be a reminder to them. Uh oh, we haven't done anything. Yeah, no, I, I would months. like. Yeah, I would yeah. like that too. I would like something, uh, you know, some some sort of requirement there. I mean, it just needs to be one or two sentences saying, we, you know, we've talked to them and we've made such and such. They've asked us to do such and such, and we're making progress. It's, you know, it doesn't it's not going to be onerous. It's not going to be like a report. No, no yeah. it doesn't need to be a 50-page report. It'd be an email. Yeah. Right. You're probably going to hear from them tomorrow, Julia, anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, they probably want to open this weekend. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, okay, if we're good with those two first ones, then the, the last condition was that um, an operation and maintenance plan for the captains, for Captain Joe's, shall be prepared and provided to the commission for review and approval and such operation and maintenance plan shall include um, provisions for or procedures for evacuation of the site um, before, during, or and or after a severe, any severe coastal storm, um, should it be necessary due to flooding. And the responsible party for the operation and maintenance plan shall be testimony. Um, we want 
I mean, they said they had very specific guidelines for what they needed to do in Boston. It would be nice if this included those mm -hmm. same guidelines or mm -hmm. rules. I just don't well, want some some Joe Schmo coming in there and hooking up a pipe and spilling stuff. And yeah. Um, I mean, I think we'll take a look at what they provide and see if you can review and if we've got approved. Yeah. Okay. Would it be appropriate, Julia, for you to ask, just ask the people in Boston to share what they did, or you think it's I can ask them to I can ask them to share with us what their procedures were in Boston, but I'm, you know, it's very I'm sure it's very different. Okay. Maybe maybe yeah. maybe not. I don't know. Um, I'd I'd like to just wait and see what they put together, but I think it, maybe we want to add to this condition that, um, you know, obviously they're not going to get us this O and M plan before they open and start operations, but that this ma operation maintenance plan shall be reviewed and approved by the commission prior to any um, operation of Captain Joe's in 2023. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I think I'd like to have that O&M before then, like yeah. given the... Paul yeah. indicated he could put it together pretty quickly, so I... Okay. I think a couple of weeks would be okay. reasonable. Okay, do you want it before like September 1st? You want it before uh, August 2nd? August, our second meeting in August, so we can talk about it then? Sure. Yeah. So the second yeah, meeting they, in August is the 16th. That's right. Okay, and they need to, to know what they're going to do. I, they already know what they're going to do. They just need yeah. to put it down in paper, on yep. paper. So others can follow those plans. I thought you had a good question, Carol, about the trash in the river and all that, because mm -hmm. you know the wind, the wind blows like crazy and that stuff blows around like crazy, especially given that they're gonna have, they're using disposable products out there. Yeah, I was hoping his answer was gonna be, we're gonna use China and silverware, yeah. but it doesn't sound like it. Yeah, uh, I doubt it, right. Well, it sounds like they're using heavy, well, at least with the plates will be the heavy reusable plastic ones, but. Right, but they're not washing those things. They're not gonna recycle all those. I mean, oh, they might be. They have a restaurant right there. They got the whole setup there. It's not like they're sitting out on Plum Island, you know, at right, the airport. Like, like sunset. Handing out food. So, you know, they mm -hmm. should be able to, to do that. They have a full blown restaurant right there. Certainly would cost them a lot less money in the long run. But yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, we'll see. Okay. Yep. Right, I'm sure people. enough of us will go there. We'll be we'll be able to see the uh, stuff getting into the. <laughs> we'll river. all be there on opening day. <laughs> Catching the stuff before it flies into the river. Yeah. Demanding they put up a huge uh, net. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. We put in a special condition that conservation commission members get like a front row table always without reservation. Yeah, I'm not sure that flies ethically. <laughs> Something about conflict of interest there, perhaps. Just joking. <clears throat> but we could offer uh, to bring our own net. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have anything else for this one? No. We all set? Motion to issue the order of conditions. Second. Roll call. Charlie Lovasetti. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshall. Yes. And I vote yes. Alrighty then. Do we have anything else? No. Motion to <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> I just okay. wanted to say, okay, go. You guys go ahead and adjourn the meeting, and I'll tell you what I was going to say. A second. All right. Uh, roll call. Charlie Lovasetti. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshall. Yes. I vote yes. All right. We're adjourned. I just wanted to um, talk about the with public meetings, and we were about to go back to in person. We were sort of trying to learn the hybrid system with Zoom, hybrid of these cameras and whatnot, super complicated, but we could probably make it work with a lot of practice. But in general, it's, um, you know, 
I think the feeling among a lot of people is that Zoom has been beneficial for access, um, maybe even more so than public meetings. And But I, that said, I want you to let me know if there's any concerns you have about us remaining in a remote meeting setting. Not for me. Okay. But let me know. You can email me or whatever if you want to, if you have anything to say about it. But the governor did extend this until I think we saw that it's next spring, right? March 31st, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The only issue I have with us meeting remotely is that we don't get to meet our new members. Right. <laughs> well, that's, that's, we can that's have our state meetings. But we did, maybe we, may, remember we last year we did go out one night. Um, and we actually went to the Black Cow. Some it of was us. A fair, it was a farewell. Same. Farewell. And so. Speaking of which, we need one for Paul. Yeah. 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 Maybe we could meet at the new raw bar. <laughs> <laughs> Let us in. You got to get Paul there. That that's going to be your biggest obstacle. Yeah, that that is the biggest issue is getting Paul to show up. Um, I well, we will could tell him we're going in his honor, and if he doesn't come, we could go anyway. <laughs> well, you know, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, maybe we we'll we'll think about an end of summer thing, maybe uh, sometime late August. I mean, I I I said you, I know you said to wait and tell you offline, but I'll just say something yeah. briefly. I I do feel like being in person, I would benefit from seeing the people who are speaking to us and presenting to us. I feel like it's it's hard to really get a feel for things in this, you know, little square environment, but I get that it's easier for a lot of people and just, I just would prefer it will be live. I just feel like it would be a better. Experience. Yeah, all I can say is you better like our company because there's nobody from the public at the meetings generally, so. Oh no, do we have more people yeah. participating now that we're on Zoom? Oh yeah. I'd say we have more attendees on Zoom for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we don't actually see them unless they're presenting right. and you don't actually get a feel for, I don't know, what, what people who might be, at, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. I, I, no, I you made I'm, a good point. No, it, you are right. It's right. You're right. But it still, <laughs> there's, I, I get paranoid um, when I see somebody standing there or sitting there at a meeting uh, asking them, why they're there and it's a, and every once in a while you get somebody who says oh i'm just here to watch the meeting and it's like what is it like once once every five months there's somebody sitting there watching the meeting so and that's the only person who comes is what you're saying that's that's yeah, the I only person in the public i can't tell you many it's times. a subdivision it, yeah there, there's there's no point in even asking the public to speak because there's no public to speak so. i see that's depends yeah. on the project. It, it definitely it depends on the project. It, um, yeah, but, Evergreen Commons created a fair amount of public comment mm -hmm. yeah. in, in the beginning. Yes. But, oh, yes. And, and a lot of them do. A lot of them do. And, and a lot of times it's hard for people. Like I, I hear in the office, people will say, I got a butters notification for this project, but I'm in Florida and our, I'm in Wisconsin and I can't get there. And I, I just want to tell you what, like what I think about it. And there's no way for them to join into the meeting, um, you know, because they're not available or maybe they have little kids and they can't show up. And so they, it, it you know, it, it's upsetting to some people when it's a, an in-person meeting that they can't physically get there, but then, um, you know, you do lose that, but there's a different, a whole different dynamic. Yeah. Correct about that. Yeah. But I think in general, we as a commission have had better attendance with Zoom. Um, <clears throat> it was like, you know, if, if you're traveling, as long as you have internet, you could participate in the meeting. Um, yeah. yeah, which, you know, and obviously with a hybrid system, if we ever get there, we can do that too. Yeah, although I asked about that. I said, what would the case be? Because I thought we were going to be starting this hybrid thing. What, how would it work if, let's say, you know, I'm, I'm in the room and Joe's there and all the other commissioners are like remote somewhere. And then you get like an applicant is here and an applicant is, is remote. And, and I was told that that's not going to be okay. So the commissioners have to all be in the room. You have to have a quorum. If it's a, if it's an in-person meeting, even if it's hybrid, 
commissioners need to be there. And then re um, remote participation would be for the public. Um, I thought I saw somewhere that for a hybrid, you needed to have one third of the quorum present in the room. That, I, I haven't seen that. Anyway, really? So Andy said oh. the other night that you need a quorum in the room. So okay. if you have a quorum in the room, somebody can participate remotely, okay. but not, you know, you need the quorum in the room. Okay. So it couldn't just be like me, you, and Joe, and then everyone else at home, or right. me, Carol, and you know, Steve or something. Right. And, you know, well, maybe what we could look to doing is maybe just once a quarter or something, just say we're going to do a public meeting or something just to yeah. have a chance when the people could get together and come and see us if they, they want to. I don't know. I don't know. I, it could or maybe be we just, I'm not certain I, I, you know, how that idea would play out, but are we actually allowed to do that? I know West Newbury was having theirs uh in person they never st i think i got the feeling they never stopped having them in person mm. I, I don't know julia will that, know better. that could be true but i wasn't sure what was going on in west newberry um <laughs> to be honest, but i'm gonna stay out of this discussion because i'm not a commissioner i will do what it is that you all decide yeah. we will do that um, so, I mean, maybe you guys want to email each other offline. It's not public meetings, not like something that needs to have, you know, a public discussion about this, I don't think. So, yeah, it's a scheduling thing. So, yeah, it's a yeah. scheduling thing. So, um, anyway, yeah. let's just table it for now and um, okay. we can sort of think it's about just it. Just one other thing a lot of times for consultants, it's a lot better to be Zoom because I, I just remember hearings in Cape Cod and everything else. I mean, what a benefit. <laughs> yeah, they, they can they can make meetings. Yeah, uh, I mean, hit two in the okay. same night. Okay. Like Tom, yeah. Tom Hughes likes it, but I think Lisa Mead prefers in person. Yeah. Really? I understand, but I can go on. Anyway. Oh. All right, something to think about. Yeah. <clears throat> Steve, you had a, uh, a motion from earlier? We already voted on it. We're already adjourned. <laughs> oh, we did, that's right, we did. We just can't say goodbye, but we are yeah. adjourned. I know, really. <laughs> All right, that's right. <laughs> we did vote on that. All right, then. All right. Good night. Anything else? Good night. All right, good night. Hey, everyone. Everybody. See you. Bye.